Hey guys, Yu-Gi-Oh! Prodigy here. First of all, I want to say sorry I haven't been posting a video for a really long time. It just takes quite a bit of time to make a video and when I... And right now I don't really have that much time because I have a lot of midterm exams right now that I have to study for. So hopefully when I'm done those, I'll be able to post some more videos, some more Yu-Gi-Oh! marketing. That, that, and maybe some vines and stuff, which is what you guys want to see. But just to make a quick video for you guys, I just wanted to show you a deck profile. Uh, this is a deck that I came up, or that I've been playing for quite a while now, and it really never can fall out of the meta. It's and it's more of an anti-meta deck, and it's just really fun to play. It's a kind of a slow control type of deck. And it could do well against pretty much anything in the meta, like Burning Abyss, Shit Alls, and all of that. So this is a Chain Beat. If you guys don't know what Chain Beat is, it's basically using abusing the effects of Thunderbird and Rabbit here to basically outchain your opponent so that you gain free advantage. They run out of card advantage, and then you eventually overtake them and win the game. So basically, uh, I'll go over all the cards, explain what they do. Um, and yeah, so first of all, we got that one Thunder King Ryo. Uh, basically, since this is an anti-meta deck, this is an anti-meta card. It's really, really powerful. You can open them up, 1900 beater, and your opponent can it can negate a special summon. Your opponent can't add cards from their deck to their hand. So like, so like, uh, Burning Abyss won't be able to add stuff to their hand, uh, which is probably the biggest example right now. So Thunder King Ryo is just very strong. Then we have the three Evil Swarm Thunderbirds. This guy is basically like a rabbit. Its effect is that during either player's turn, when a card or effect is activated, except during damage step, you can banish this card, and then it comes back during the next standby phase, so either your opponent's or your next standby phase. And when it returns, it comes back with 300 more attacks, so it'll be 1950. Uh, it doesn't keep the attack, so if it gets banished and comes back, it'll still be 1950. So it's a very powerful card. Like the rabbit, it could outchain your opponent, get away from cards like Bombless Trap Hole, Mirror Force, any kind of trap. And it's just really annoying and hard to deal with. And it's really good with like Black Garden and stuff, which I'll get into a bit later. Then we play two Fire Fist Bears. Uh, the bears, basically, because you play the 10 keys, you can search out the bear, play him, and then pop a, pop a monster in the field. If it does damage, you could get an air tanky, which could get you an air bear or rabbit. And then, yeah, just bear is overall really good card to get some get rid of a annoying monster if you have to. Then we play two Fossil Dyna Psychopathelos. Um, basically, another anti-meta card. Neither player can special summon. And then, if it's flip face up, you destroy all special summon monsters on the field. If you haven't noticed, this deck actually does not special summon any monsters. Thunderbird and Wind Up Rabbit do not count as special summons when they come back from being banished, so you just keep that in mind. Then we played the three rabbits. Basically just like the Thunderbird, you could get outchain your opponent, get away from anything, any traps, and just a really annoying card. You basically can't get you can't destroy a rabbit unless they outchain you. Which um, chaining is for it's more technical, so you have to know a lot about the rules and mechanics of chaining to play this deck. Uh, I play one Neospace and Grand Mode just for a card to get rid of annoying stuff. So if they have a really big beater that can't be destroyed or anything, and or it's just anything that you need to get rid of, this card can pop it back into the hand or bring it back to the extra deck or something. So it's just overall a really good card. Then I play the one Dark Coal. I'll put all the one ups together here. We play one Dark Coal, just a mass removal, destroys everything on the field. It won't destroy your monsters because Thunderbird and Rabbit will just uh, banish itself and it won't get destroyed. Uh, you could lose these guys, but um, most of the time you only have like Thunderbird, Rabbit on the field. Then we play the uh, D Fissure uh, because it is anti-meta deck. D Fissure basically screws over a lot of decks. A lot of decks right now have uh, to utilize the graveyard, so like Burning Abyss needs the graveyard. Got that one Regeki, because Regeki's back, destroys all your opponent's monsters. Basically, just like a Dark Hole. So, you basically have like two Dark... Or a Dark Hole could count as a Regeki. So, you're basically playing like two Regekis. Just board clears, get some really good value. Play two Terraformings, uh, helps deck thins, helps you get your Black Garden. Black Garden is actually pretty important, and I'll talk about that later. 
uh, we got three part of duality for consistency. Um, sometimes you just open because you have a pretty low monster count. Sometimes you just need a part of duality to get a monster or a trap or something that could um, just get you going. And since you don't special summon, then the downside effect is, not, is really irrelevant. Then we play two mystical space typhoons. So you could play three, uh, but I just have two in here right now. It's just good card to get rid of like royal decrees or anything that's really annoying. You don't. I don't. I normally don't use MST on set cards because I don't really care about set cards because I could just ev evade them. So MST is just needed for those continuous cards most of the time, like Phoenix Chain. And then we have three ten keys. The ten keys are very strong because it searches out either your bear or your rabbit. Uh, gives them a str slight power boost and gives you fuel to pop cards with your bear. Just overall, ten keys a strong card. Helps you thin your deck, kind of like terraforming. Then we got the three black gardens. The black gardens are really good because they won't affect your thunderbird and rabbit. If they do cut their attacks in half, they could, you could remove them, then they'll come back with full attack and they won't be affected by Black Garden. Basically what this means is that if you have a Thunderbird out on the board, 1950, whatever your opponent plays, he has to have something that's over 3900 3, attack to be able to run over Thunderbird because any monster played um, gets their attack cut in half and then they special summon a Rose token to your opponent's side of the field. So the tokens are actually pretty good because it means your opponent has to have monsters over 1600 attack to destroy the tokens. Um, and also the tokens are able to protect you from OTKs or the tokens can also uh, bring out monsters to for you to do a little bit of damage on. And we got Needle Ceiling. Needle Ceiling also works with Black Garden because all the tokens will count as a monster. So if four, four or more monsters are on the field, you destroy everything. Pretty good. And then the good thing with Needle Ceiling is that if you have like Thunderbird and Rabbit on the field and your opponent has a full board, you can activate Needle Ce Ceiling and chain it with your Thunderbird and Rabbit so that your monsters don't get destroyed but all of your opponents does. Then we have one Mirror Force just for a surprise. Uh, trap if your opponent is overextending. We got two compulsory escape device. Now this card is each player chooses one monster they control and shuffle it into your deck. So say if you have a rabbit on the board and your opponent has uh, I don't know like a judgment dragon or something you could just activate compulsory escape device target your rabbit they have to target their JD. You chain rabbit, rabbit uh, goes becomes banished but this effect still goes off, so your opponent is forced to shuffle their card into their deck while your rabbit just comes back on the next standby phase. Then we have Torrential Tribute, again, just a nerd card if your opponent's coming too much, and then you won't lose your monsters because you just chain it. Compulsory Evacuation Device, obviously a very powerful card. Um, Accumulated Fortune, I play one just as a bit of a uh, draw engine. You do you can have some pretty long chains, so sometimes, so this card can be activated pretty easily. We have one Macrocosmos, just like the D Fissure, it's anti-meta, it's very powerful, it doesn't affect you except for your bear. Then we have two Fiendish Chains, uh, just something very, just overall pretty good card, you could replace it with like a breakthrough skill and stuff. We have Solemn Warning, Solemn Warning's, uh, of course, a very strong card. If your opponent plays something really powerful, you just deny it. Ruins plays. Bottomless Trap Hole has like the same purpose, just ruin out plays and destroys powerful monsters. For the extra deck, the extra deck is really irrelevant. Uh, you could pretty much put anything in it. Uh, the Leviar, I guess, is pretty good because if something gets removed and can't come back, you can always bring it back. Um, you only play rank 3s or 4s, so I have like Exiton Knights if I need it, Silent Honor Arc, Castle, pretty strong. I do play an Ophion because you can play Ophion with your two Thunderbirds. Uh, Black Ship of Corn, Cowboy. I sometimes use Cowboy to win games. Just uh, yeah, you can pretty much put anything in here that's ranked three or four. This card, um, I did side Cyber Dragon at one point, so I could take it out. But yeah. And then um, you normally don't actually go into Exceed monsters though because they can't bounce back. You'll just lose 
your very limited amount of monsters. So normally I don't pl don't use my extra deck unless it's something I have to use. Um, for this isn't this isn't my actual side deck. This is some optional cards that you could use. So Upstart Goblin helps thin out your deck a bit more to get cards that you actually need if you wanted to. Uh, Maxi, same thing. If your opponent's going to make a big power play, then you can use Maxi to draw a bunch of cards. Because otherwise, this deck doesn't really have a draw engine, it only has like cycling cards. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, there is Sojourn. Sojourn, I might actually main deck because it's it, pretty strong right now against uh, against decks like Burning Abyss. Uh, you could put in like a Nair Evacuation de Escape Device. Enemy Controller also, also works because if you target a monster to tribute, you could tribute like tokens, for example. You could tribute like your rabbit and then just chain it so you don't tribute anything. Uh, you can play more needle ceilings. Needle ceilings are a bit harder to pull off though, so that's why I only play one of. You could, like I said, you could put breakthrough skills in instead of like fiendish chains. Your third MST is always possible. T Space time trap hole is also a very strong trap card you could use. Uh, you could also put in vanity's emptiness. This card doesn't affect you because you don't special summon again. Uh, the only reason why I probably won't is not the problem. The reason why I'm not playing it right now is because I do have a lot of responsive cards. So cards that are being sent to your graveyard will be uh, will destroy this. And also, if they play, if you have Fanny's emptiness and your opponent MST is like your face down card, you also use your emptiness, so you go minus from that, which is. Um, but but again, I might consider putting this this card in. I'll see how it goes, maybe. Uh, you could also decide to put Light Imprisoning Mirror, Dark Shadow Imprisoning Mirror, um, especially if you're going into a competitive format or a competitive tournament and you expect to see uh, decks like a lot of Burning Abyss and Shadows and stuff. Then you could also put White Spread Dud. It's also a very good chain beat card because you select. Um, you can select two monsters in attack position, and then when one is removed from the field, destroy this card, and then all the monsters affected by this card are destroyed. So you could attach it to a rabbit, and then one of your opponent's card. Then your rabbit could just get removed from play, this card destroys, and you destroy your opponent's monster. So, it's pretty strong. And then you can also put in a Book of Moon. Book of Moon is just overall a really good spell as well. I just haven't really found some space to put it in. Uh, I could take out like an escape device or maybe the needle ceiling, but these are the, all the optional cards you can use, and yeah, th basically the chain beat deck. Obviously, if there are cards or improvements that you can see that I can make, then leave a comment down below. But yeah, hopefully I uh, can maybe show a quick game, and hopefully this video isn't too long. Alright guys, so I have a replay here of, for us, me playing the chain beat against a Gear Gear player. So I'm just going to start it right now. Um, how do I swap? Oh, here we go. So yeah, this is this guy's playing Gear Gears, and let me lower this, the sound a bit. Basically, I want to show you this replay because it was a 30-minute game. I was go originally going to show you me playing and sinking over the turns, but it takes so long to. This game took so long that I just have to play it as a replay because, yeah. So here, uh, let me pause it first. So right there. This shows how chain beat. Uh, you have to if you're playing against someone that doesn't know chains the chain mechanic as well as you do, then you can gain a lot of advantage. Cause he played Phoenix Chain here uh, on my summon the Wind Up Rabbit, but what he didn't know is that I could activate Wind Up Rabbit's effect to banish it to outchain this Phoenix Chain. So now he just has an empty ch Phoenix Chain on the board, and then I just set everything here because why not? So I'm going to get some tokens here. And I actually misplayed, I should have used the Macrocosmos on his summon of Arsenal. But here, this is when I just decide to play big chains, draw some cards. And like I said earlier, you could use the compulsory escape device to bounce back a token and then they end up minusing from that play. So I'm going so I take a few damage here, but I survive. So here I was deciding if I want to ride Geki, I decided I do, just because you do plus one, you know, I could get some damage in. I did misplay because I could have just uh, summoned first and then ride Geki, but he still takes some damage and I set the MST 
I don't have to activate it on his set card because at this time I don't have anything to wor worry about. It's more like I need an MST a Phoenix chain if I have to, but stuff like that doesn't happen. So this is my so the fossil down actually is quite a big stalling card for a while because for a while he can't get over it. You need to summon a monster over 2600 attack that's not special summon to get over it. Or you have to set your monster first so it's a lot slower. So at this point he did make a misplay because he summoned the Girgiano MK2 but he can't special summon so he just summoned a monster that would get him damage. Uh, he saw him warning my Thunderbird and took 2000 damage plus an air 1000 from the battle damage so he lost a lot of life points that turn. And then for the next couple of turns, nothing really happens. I decided to hold on to Rabbit because having two out is fine. Um, at this point, he's just setting a bunch of cards because um, there's nothing he could do. He's just setting up a board before he flips everything later on to try to attack. So as you can see, he does... I'm, I'm not too sure what kind of play he was going to make. But he ended up flipping everything, and he didn't attack this turn, which was kind of confusing. Apparently he made a misplay and made some kind of mistake, but he wanted me to just end my turn. But I was like, screw you, I'm just going to keep <laughs> do what I could do. Uh, this turn... Again, he wasted his bombless trap hole on something. So again, that's a bit of an experience. I do finish chain one of his arsenals because um, they're pretty big right now, 2300 attack, I can't get over it, so I had to finish chain one of them. He plays this uh, Exceed 103 and tries to target my Thunderbird but to first destroy my monster and draw a card, but then I just outchain him. So here he wanted to like fill out my board with monst with tokens so I can't bring back Thunderbird. So this is when I had to decide to just get rid of my rabbit so I could bring back a Thunderbird which is a stronger monster. And overall better than rabbit in my opinion. Uh, I didn't want him to draw two cards with the supply unit but I figured next that it didn't really matter so next turn I decided to attack. So, for the next couple of turns, nothing really fantastic happens. Just have to wait it out. For quite a few turns, I actually end up having to discard cards because I just have a bunch of cards that I can't play in my hand. Right now, um, I'm just trying to grind them out, <laughs> make try see if I could deck them out. Uh, yeah. So I decided not to attack after he try to defusion my Thunderbird because if it was a monster that special summoned then I would get an air token and wouldn't be able to bring back Thunderbird. So I just decided to wait another turn. Um, after a while I get a bit impatient so I try to make a play get rid of his mountain but he has Torrential Tribute but my Thunderbird lives on and he just clears my board of tokens which is fine by me. Draws another card. He said he was waiting for one card that will make him win the game, but I don't know what he was waiting for. Did I check his deck actually? I guess he was waiting for Regeki or something. <laughs> but yeah, basically I just did enough. If you guys didn't see that, um, basically he had some monsters out, and then I was able to just uh, see what he had. What did he have? I wasn't paying attention, but. Basically I did some battle damage, he had low enough HP, so I just brought out the cowboy just to end the game scumbag style. He was pretty salty about that. But yeah, that's basically it on the chain B deck. Of course, as you saw, the game is really long, it is really grinding. You can get into stalemates, but you normally do win the stalemates because your opponent can't deal with your board. And you just normally come out on top, you get value, you get good trades. So. Chain Beat is a very powerful deck and hopefully you like this 
deck profile and gameplay, and I'll see you guys next time. Subscribe, I will be posting more videos soon, and I'll see you guys later. Peace.